Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin and Blizzard finally updated this place. First of all, we have new portals for the Corrupted Stormwind and Corrupted Argrimmar. They've been pushing a lot more updates, more stuff with Rathian, but they also added a new vendor, definitely not corrupted by Nazoth. So Blizzard talked about replacing Titanforge system in Battle for Azeroth for the next patch. This doesn't seem, first of all, like a feature that'll continue past Battle for Azeroth, but maybe. But they're trying to find new ways of changing titan forge so instead of getting a massive upgrade instead you get pieces of gear with an extra bonus that has a negative but also a positive and you kind of gotta wait it out and apparently you're supposed to be able to cure these items of the corruption losing the benefits but also losing the negatives if you decide to use it as a regular piece of loot now i want to take a look at what this is like and give you guys a little bit of my idea of what this is again the vendor is here so we're gonna open up a bunch of these actually let me go can I just sell him my garbage? I can. Let's clear out my bags. So I have no idea what kind of corruptions they may be. We even see one of those pieces on this guy right now. The the shields. It looks like it is raid items that are inside. It looks like people actually are corrupted with a... Uh, oh my god, with different debuffs. Holy crap. Okay, let's see this. So corrupted nail of the item. We got ourselves a fist weapon in Jew and Karis. So this one doesn't seem to have... Oh whoa that's a cool fist weapon uh too bad i'm volpera because you can barely see. okay let me stand like oh my god this looks so cool it's like a tentacle wrapped around you with a massive claw this one doesn't seem to be actually corrupted let's see if we can buy another one we got onyx and mute breaches hey we actually got a piece with the corruption as you can see at the bottom right there's a difference between let me put on a pair of pants next to him you can see a normal pair of pants just has a purple outline this one has this eyeball at the top left and onyx imbued breaches 445 that's a pretty high atom level versatility and mastery plus 21 corruption whatever that is increases the amount of haste you gain from all sources by four percent total corruption 21 corruption resistance so it looks like you have to have corruption resistance and that'll be along the lines of the cloak that you would get from here we go wait reduce the sanity loss from sources no this is just sanity loss so maybe you're supposed to use some sort of items to increase your corruption? Let's roll for another one. Let's see what else we get. Gloves of the Abyss Authority. These do have a corruption. Increases your leech by full 6%, but increases corruption. Like a healer would actually find that leech. 6% leech, which usually takes quite a bit of stats put together. Wow, but total corruption becomes 25. What if I put on more? Oh, wow, we can actually see different debuffs. Wait, hold on, hold on. Wow, look at that. You actually have deep... Okay, so debuffs do appear as you put on corruption. So the more you corrupt yourself, the different debuffs... I guess maybe if you hit certain levels of corruption, you'll have various debuffs. Okay, let's see if we can just unlock more. I wonder if the amount of corruption is equivalent to the buff that you get. Or some pieces have more corruption, some pieces have less. Increases the amount of mastery again from all sources. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me just open up a bunch of these to see what we get this is gonna take a while okay so i spent a little bit of time opening up a lot of these pieces i got myself a sword i got two of those swords actually so one fist weapon two swords and it looks like the weapons don't have any debuffs they don't come with a corruption it seems like only other pieces that are part of like rings and pants and stuff are going to be corrupted but also another thing i noticed is you have anguish cries belt well, this one increases my mastery, but this one increases my haste from all sources. So it can be a same piece of gear with a different enchantment, or I guess, extra corruption effect. So I want to take a look at everything we have so far. We have anything from increases the damage you deal with critical strikes by 7%. That is so big. That's actually an insane buff. We have increases the amount of versatility you gain from all sources. That's huge. Although that number can be higher. There's one right here that increases the amount of versatility by 2%, mastery by 4%. Hopefully Blizzard won't make it so you can stack these, otherwise that'll be busted. But another thing I also want to see is what does corruption do to your character? And how much corruption can you handle? Alright, well, let's see how much we can load up. So with a single pair of pants, we are taking 21 corruption total, and that's enough to get us into two debuffs. Take a damage and a chance to slow your movement speed for 5 seconds. The magnet also increases with further corruption, so the more corruption we can gain, the more slowed we can get when we take damage. 
Thousand abilities have a chance to create a corrupted zone on your location, dealing shadow damage to you every two seconds. The size of the damage will corrupted, so the more corrupted you are, the bigger the zone is, forcing you to move around a lot. Very unlucky. So what if we were to trade out those pants and put on something that gives us the least amount of corruption, like eight? So we have a ring. It gives us a little corruption, so it feels like a little bit of corruption. You only get grasp and tendrils where you'll get slowed down, but then you can stack it up even more. So now we have 29 corruption. We should be able to get a second buff, debuff. Okay, let's try belt or bracers. How much corruption is that going to be? 54. Is that going to be one debuff? Oh, your next pillow switch. Oh, I randomly get buff. Your next three spells will have their cooldowns reduced. I'm not even doing anything, and it keeps procking quite often. I guess I reduce the cooldown of faints and other abilities. Wait, it just randomly procs. Wow! Wait, that's busted. Next three abilities have a cooldown reduced by three. But we also have taken damage. Whoa. Uh, has a chance to summon a thing from beyond, which pursues you for 10 seconds and speed increases with further corruption. Wait a minute. I kind of want to see this. I want to see what happens when you take damage. Okay, how far, how much further can we go with our corruption? Let's start really stacking it up. 23 on top of it. We are pretty corrupted. And you can see there's a visual element to it, how corrupted the character is. Now we get a fourth debuff, Creeping Death. Take damage in... Damage taken increased by 27 and healing reduced. Wow, so you can actually just completely corrupt yourself where you simply just take more damage. So that'll probably be the element where I feel like, depending on the class, depending on what you can do with your gameplay, this will be the maximum. This will be the max corruption you can get. I wonder if you can go more though. Oh, corruption. Whoa. Okay. Oh, this hurts. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no way. That's massive. And it hurts. And I never noticed this, but... I mean, I didn't notice it, but I never really understood what it was for. But there's an extra flavor text that's unique to the passives where it reduces your corruption by 10. So these all effects increase your corruption. But if you have... All three passives enabled, Breath of the Dying, Spark of Inspiration, and Formless Void. Basically, you're stuck to using these um, essences. But you'll be able to use them to mitigate how much corruption you have. So you might be able to, you know, not get into the creeping death. And oh my god, this is going all over the place. Oh, this is huge. Oh my god, that is insanely big. I was just auto attacking this thing. Imagine having to freak out for your life and just running out of that massive zone every time things go. <laughs> A wire. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely uncomfortable. <laughs> oh my god, it's actually 118. I'm literally moving backwards with that slow. Holy crap. So Grasp and Tendrils basically slows you and roots you if you have this much corruption. I'm slowed by 118. You would think I'd be walking backwards with that. There it is. Can't move anywhere. Yep, actually just stuck in place. Or I'm moving. Just extremely slowly, because I guess you never really... Oh, whoa, 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 Did you see that? What the hell was that? That was like a little, little, little void baby. A little old god baby. It kind of came out of nowhere at me, so now I'm trying to pay attention in case it shows up again. Again, it like the void zone, it seems like it has a very low proc chance. I would say the tendrils have a, has a higher proc chance, but even not by much. And I'm getting constantly attacked. I'm pretty sure every attack... Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Oh, Void Baby. The Void Baby ran at me. It was so fast. I sprinted with Cloak just to get out of the zone. I could not run it. It sprinted at me. If I didn't have a Cloak, that would have been it. Wow. Okay. I think that's about enough that I've seen. Oh, goodness. How much more... Can you get corruption in every single slot? So right now we have about 146 corruption. 96% damage taken and pretty sure all the this is gonna one shot us this is gonna one shot us and this is gonna I don't even know what it's gonna do 200% movement speed reduction something crazy basically snail's pace or maybe it procs more so you just completely will be slowed well anyway this has been the new titan forging but instead it's gonna be corruption system so this item is corrupted has a buff and there's supposed to be a way for you to cleanse it Overall, interesting. I still don't know how to process all this. And I don't really have... I haven't really made up my mind if I like the system or not. 
It is way too early to call it, and I kind of just want to let it simmer for a little bit. But you guys are more than welcome to let me know in the comments below what do you think of this corruption system as of right now, as it is, what do you think they can improve upon, do you think this is a good step in the right direction, do you like this better than the original system? Because I kind of like the idea of like a, there's a drawback to what you get. Although I feel like they should have done something different, maybe like have a piece of gear that gives you a minus stat, but has a bonus effect or something. So I don't even know. Maybe like a piece of gear that doesn't even give you stats, but instead makes you do just a little bit of like damage or something with some randomization effect. So then you have to decide and figure out which parts of the effects and gear you would want, which ones you wouldn't. I don't know. I guess there's a lot of ways to slice this. Either way, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed this update on the corruption forging system of 8.3. Again, it's super, super early, so there's a lot that could go on changing, but it's good that Blizzard put this out on PTR. If you want to log on PTR, test this out for yourself, you're more than welcome to. The vendor is right here in the heart of Azeroth. It's best to get on this as soon as possible because they'll eventually rotate this guy out. They'll place something else in for us to test and give feedback to. This is interesting so far. I want to see what everybody else says, and I want to see what Blizzard is intending to do with it. Pretty sure there'll be more buffing and nerfing with the system in the future. Overall, though, kind of dope, kind of interesting, not against it. I just don't really know how it'll play into the big scope of things. This is, a, if anything, a little bit better than the Benta gear, which we literally had to use Benta gear in the final raid. Kind of crazy, you know what I mean? So this is kind of a cool way, instead of gaining item level upgrades, you get some kind of a curse, but also you get a buff. Uh, so it's at least kind of meaningful. Yeah. I think that's the only thing that Blizzard is trying to solve is trying to make gear that's meaningful and has you make decisions whether you want to run a specific piece of gear or not. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. This video is too long. Thank you guys. I'll see all of you in the next one.